part three of this overview, we will perform a demo of the cause of death digital data package. The steps we will perform in this demo include a review of the tracker registration page, a review of the data entry page, filling in the details for data entry using an example medical certificate of cause of death, and finally, a review of how the underlying cause of death is coded in DHIS2. We have previously worked with an example of entering mortality data using DHIS2 when we demonstrated how to create the ICD-10 event program. In this simplified program, the main goal was to generate both morbidity and mortality statistics using ICD-10 codes. However, as we were using the event model in this scenario, we were not able to uniquely identify each individual case. Additionally, as it did not include many of the rules required to properly code a medical certificate of cause of death, the program was working under the assumption that this would be completed manually outside of the system. In this example, we are going to review a cause of death program now using the tracker model. The program itself, as it is, could be considered to be one of the more simply structured programs in how it has been implemented in Tracker. This is because it only has one item that can be used as a unique identifier, a system-generated ID number. The elements that are used to identify the information regarding a person's death uniquely could always be adjusted, and we will see this in the next overview of this section. But in this example, the system ID is used to find, modify, or link this individual's death details as required. Unlike the immunization program that you reviewed, you do not need to enter any type of additional information when entering cause of death information in this case. So let's save and continue to review the actual form. We can see when we continue that the cause of death program has been created to closely copy the paper-based medical certificate of cause of death with some modifications now that the form is in an electronic format. For example, manner of death is now a drop-down rather than a series of checkboxes as only one option can be selected. This form uses a custom design to achieve this look, which is a form that has been programmed by an individual or team rather than a form that DHIS2 generates based on simple inputs. This form has all the rules to code the underlying cause of death based on the medical terminology that has been entered within the medical certificate. If we scroll down to the bottom of the form, we can see a results table that becomes populated as you fill in the certificate. All the details that are entered are saved against the ID number that has been generated and can be searched for later on using this number. So traditionally, what you would see is a filled medical certificate of cause of death that looks something like this. Let's assume this paper form has been filled in correctly. In this case, we can identify tuberculosis as the underlying cause of death. There are a number of rules that are carried out in order to identify the underlying cause. But in most cases, when multiple causes are listed, usually the lowest line in a correct sequence is the underlying cause of death. One of the key challenges with this type of paper form is correctly coding the underlying cause of death using the correct ICD-10 code. Let's go through and see how this gets translated into DHIS2 as we enter the same details from the paper form into DHIS2. The demographic information can be filled in relatively quickly. We can start by filling in the date of death. We can also enter the date of birth. We can see when the date of birth is selected, the birth date unknown checkbox disappears as it is no longer necessary. Let's move on to the chain of events 
resulting in death. We can select the medical terms from within the small dictionary. This list is less than the full list of terms in the full ICD-10 list and is used to simplify the overall process of coding the cause of death. We can fill in the time from the onset of death as well. So far, we are able to take all of the fields from the paper form and enter them into DHIS2. We can proceed to select tuberculosis as our underlying cause of death. Before continuing, let's scroll down to the results section. This is one of the main advantages of this tool, as the underlying cause of death is now coded using both small and ICD-10 codes. This is due to the various terms included in the small dictionary being linked to both the small and ICD-10 codes in DHIS2, which allows this process to be automated. Let's go ahead and complete this entry. As we select options, we can see fields that are no longer relevant are removed from data entry in order to reduce any potential data entry errors. Once we have filled in everything, we can proceed to complete the event and enrollment in order to save these details. As a next activity, we will give you a chance to explore the Cause of Death program in DHIS2 Tracker Capture. Please complete this activity before proceeding to the next subsection.